Welcome to the Whitney Blackpool. Here in February, you've got to love Blackpool in the winter, haven't you? This is the location where we did one of the main film shots for Blackpool Lights. It was just down here. Now, I apologise for the wind because it's obviously February now and it's very windy. But this is the first introduction we're going to do to our new filming location section where me and the boys are going to be walking around and talking about what happens in Blackpool when it comes to filming. And we're going to show you a lot of behind the scenes photographs of what's going on and what we were doing. So it's going to start off with Blackpool Lights, as I said, and then after we've done that one, we're then going to talk to Pete about Merge on the Blackpool Express that was filled predominantly in his arcade. So this here is just where we had one of the big introduction photographs, one of the publicity photographs, and Nick is going to put, by magic, a photograph up here, which will show you where I am in relationship to the actual filming. And a quick behind the scenes story, when we were filming here, if you just turn the camera around, you can see Central Pier there, and there was loads of people actually standing on the boardwalk, and people kept pointing to me and saying that I was the guy who played Phil Mitchell. I've no idea why, I don't think I look anything like Phil Mitchell, but I think it may have been because of the bald head. So you had loads of people on there going, oh my God, these are famous people, because they've got a big film crew here. We weren't famous, we're just Blackpool people. But the film, the film people love Blackpool, and you've got to love being Blackpool. Viva Blackpool! Hi hi Chris, this whole media journey that you started, started with Blackpool Lights. It did, this was all, oh, this was about what, eight years ago now, something like that. We had a media company come in, oh uh, god, who do we call them, Story Vault, and they were doing a programme about, uh, on for Channel 5, and they wanted to uh, do a, a, a live docky soap about what was happening in Blackpool and about the characters in Blackpool. So they phoned me up at the arcade, and they said, do you mind if we introduce you, put you into this in a small part, just your day-to-day -day lives? Now, at the time, I was running two hotels, a stag party hotel and a hen party hotel and the arcade. And they were interested in following people around. I think they'd already got Joey Blower on board. They'd already got a taxi driver on board, a couple of lads who owned a hotel and a couple of other people. So they were basically doing segments of each individual's people, what they were doing. And as, as we went through this, then Alan joined in, uh, who used to be the bingo caller from next door. Unfortunately, he's passed away now. But if you've seen Blackpool Lodge, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And they decided to introduce him into it. And as it built up, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, we're going to start talking about now, about how this all started and what it actually meant. Because before that, I had no media understanding at all. But Blackpool Lights got so big, people were coming down and they wanted to see what was going on and where the filming was. And obviously, we're now at this point now from where it started with Blackpool Lights. So it all started in here in the arcade and then when they found out i had a stag party hotel and a head hand party hotel they then developed that into it then when they understood the relationship i had with alan and alan at the time was uh, talking to a girl from thailand they developed that into it and it ended up with me and alan taking over 90 percent of the program when we was only meant to be a small part of this program and uh, Rick, uh, in the middle of this, Rick will put the link below. So if you've not seen Blackball Lights, you can see what I'm actually talking about. And as we develop this video, which we're doing now, we're going to show you the different filming locations. I'm going to insert photographs all the time about them putting cameras on my car, filming me in here, following me around. And what my thoughts were at the time. So this is just a basic introduction. The introduction is, they came along, they said, do you fancy doing a little bit of filming? 
And I said, yeah, no problem at all. I thought this could be a laugh. And it ended up a massive monster. And then from then, if you actually go onto my Facebook page, I've got a massive filmography on my Facebook page now. And I've lost count now of how many media sources we've had. We've had BBC One, we've had BBC, we've had uh, ITV in here, we've had Channel 4, we've had Channel 5, we've had UK Gold, we've had all the YouTubers, we have people coming in all the time filming now. And this all started with Blackpool Live. Now that's where the journey started and I have absolutely no idea where this journey is going to end. Well we're going to talk about specifics now and uh, the first segment I'd like to talk about is uh, the car, what they did with the car. If you see a picture here which Rick's just going to put up there, it's a picture of the car. Well to be fair it's a picture of the wife's car, you'll see all the flowers on the front so it's the wife's car and they put cameras on the front of this car and it was to basically I was driving round and round in circles while they were filming me but what you didn't see was the audio crew actually hiding in the well at the back seat so we were in the back seat with all his equipment hiding down while I had microphones on me so you actually didn't see that I kept having to drive round and round in circles while they were doing the filming and then I had to then come back to here and then the producer would then look at the filming and say no I need you to do it a different way and then so the poor audio guy was cramped down and so he couldn't be behind the back seat so you couldn't see him with all his equipment and like for instance there was a shot which you'll see Rick would put below Blackpool lights obviously so you could watch it and it was like when we were driving to the airport to go to Thailand in one of the sequences but what people probably didn't realize if we were driving to Blackpool Airport in the show yeah but you can't actually go to Thailand from Blackpool Airport because what had happened was we'd actually already done this and then we told the filming company about it so they had to recreate this and obviously they didn't want to have to drive all the way down to Manchester so we perceived us as going to Blackpool Airport but it, it's just funny if you actually want to watch the film yeah and see and see if you can see the audio crew hiding behind the back seats it's actually really funny when you don't remember and also we were driving around in circles with cameras strapped to the side of the car and I wasn't off getting some strange looks with all these cameras tied to the car and all that lot but it's actually people think it's really easy I think oh it's just a camera in there but it's actually very technical and there's a lot of background people the, the uh, audio people the filming people the producers and all that lot and I'm taking direction off them so there's literally that shot of which was about, probably about a two minute shot of me going to the airport with Alan probably took about three hours of filming and people don't realise that right, you'll see this other photo here which is a photograph of me in front of the burger bar you'll see the sides have slightly changed now because obviously this was a few years ago uh, and it looks like that I'm actually open but we actually did this filming uh, at the start of season or just before the start of season so we did it as a, what they call it a closed set so we weren't actually open it looked like we were open but we weren't open there were actually people who you didn't see at the front of the arcade stopping people coming in because obviously when you see a film crew and a film camera there's a lot of people come in and try to see what's going on so a lot of the film when it's done it's perceived to be open but it's not actually open we either do it early before people come in or late at night or we do it off season and you have a lot of people standing outside and since then it's a lot we've had a lot of uh since then we've had a lot of music videos in here and stuff like that uh as i say as i said before if you go onto my facebook page you'll see a filmography there's lots of links there are lots of different things that have been done in here but every time we do any filming in here it's always a closed set because obviously we have to work and you can't do it when you've actually got customers in or if you do need customers to walk around these are normally people who, who i know or people the film crew bring in I'll tell you a story, and a lot, a lot of people know this story, but what happened, in the filming, you'll see that uh, Alan was talking to a lady from Thailand, from Bangkok. He'd been talking to her on the internet for quite a while, and he decided he wanted to go and visit her, and he wanted me to go with him, which is actually perfectly true. And, and when we got to the airport, he, this is where people didn't actually see what happened. He didn't actually end up getting on the plane. He said, no, there's no way I cannot get on the plane. I cannot fly. So I said to him, OK, we'll go back home. He said, no, no, no. Do me a favour. Will you go over there and talk to her? So by this point, I already booked off. 
you know, I already was going on holiday anyway, so I thought, okay, I can go over there. So I ended up flying over to Thailand by myself. I had nothing booked, no hotels booked or anything. I was just meant to be meeting this girl at some time in Thailand. So I ended up talking to this guy on the aeroplane who was from Kirkham, literally just around the corner. And I explained this story to him. And he said, oh my God, so we got talking all that. He said, well, I'm going to Pattaya. Do you fancy coming to Pattaya with me? Now, I had no idea what Pattaya was. I had, I had absolutely no concept of what was happening in Thailand at all. So when we got to Bangkok Airport, I ended up jumping in a taxi with him and going to Pattaya, which is about 120, 130 miles away from Bangkok. So I ended up getting to Pattaya, and, but he had a friend in Pattaya who, who owned a beer bar that had some rooms above it. Now, Transpire, this guy was actually originally from Blackpool, which was absolutely brilliant. So I ended up staying in Pattaya. So I ended up in Pattaya by accident, by myself. And I had no idea about what Thailand was like. And oh my God, if you're going to go to Thailand, yeah, Pattaya is a one hell of an experience. Oh, it, oh, the sex capital of the world, unbelievable. And so, but I did end up having to go and see the girl from Bangkok. Now, this was about a 120 mile uh, trip back to Bangkok. So, people don't understand how cheap it is over there. So what I did was I caught a taxi from Pattaya to Bangkok saw the girl that Alan was meant to be meeting, explained the situation, then went back to Pattaya. And the whole round trip, this is about 250 mile round trip, cost me 30 pounds. Unbelievable. But the, the true story is, I ended up in Pattaya, in Thailand, by myself, by accident. And people don't believe me when they told me, because when, when I was talking to them, I'm going across, and when I was talking to the expats in the pubs, in Pattaya itself, yeah, they couldn't believe how it ended up like this. So people didn't realise that's what ended up happening. And then Alan didn't end up uh, meeting this girl and he ended up marrying somebody else. Uh, but that's what happened with this story. You happy with that? I actually thought that was Heidi. No, a lot of people do, no. Heidi, when you've seen Blackpool Lights and then you see Heidi, you yeah. think that's Heidi, the same Heidi already lived in England. Did she? Yeah. Oh, Alan, 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 meant, Alan meant her on the on the on the on the internet site, and she's actually from uh, uh, the Philippines. Oh, so not the same one. No, she's not from. She's from the Philippines, but she was already working in Kettering, oh, right. in a nursing home when she met Alan on the internet. Sweet. So no, she so she never was, was already in this country. You see, a lot of people would sort of, you know, me included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I assumed Heidi was no, the, totally the different woman. Totally different woman. Wow. See, that's something you know, big behind the scenes stuff. No.